brothers and sisters, I just love my wife. She is the sunshine of my life. And I'm so grateful for the choir. What a beautiful number. Thank you so much. Music speaks to the hearts. And I'm so grateful for what you just taught us through music. There's so much power that comes from singing the restored gospel hymns. Brothers and sisters, it's so good to be with you. In December 2019, my wife Hannah and I received a virtual call from President Darlin H. Oaks. He extended a call for us to serve as mission leaders. During that meeting, we mustered up the courage to ask him where our assignment would be. He calmly replied that he did not know where we would serve, but we would receive a letter from the First Presidency communicating our assignment in a few weeks. He further hinted that we would most likely serve in Africa. After the meeting, Hannah and I had a lengthy conversation during our one-hour drive from my office in Accra, Ghana, to Tema, where we lived. We speculated about which missions we might serve in and concluded it would be in Nigeria, where we both served our young missions. We felt a mix of excitement and apprehension. Finally, the long-awaited call and assignment letter arrived in our inbox. We were quite nervous and took some time before opening the email in our bedroom. When we saw our assigned area, we screamed in shock. Our two children, recognizing a possible problem, ran to our room and eagerly inquired about the news. Mom, Dad, what news do you have? Should we be happy and rejoice or be sad and cry? We responded with a playful yes. <laughs> we officially shared the news with them the following day. Our assignment was to serve as mission leaders in the South Carolina Columbia mission. Our eight-year-old son, Gilbert, asked, where is that? <laughs> we replied, it is in the United States. His older brother, Kelvin, exclaimed, that's so cool. That night, as we knelt to pray, we thanked Heavenly Father for the opportunity, but also expressed our initial disappointment that South Carolina was not anywhere near Africa, where we had thought of and hinted by President Oaks that we might serve. In that moment, I received a sharp rebook from the Spirit, reminding me of whose work this is. As Isaiah recorded, quote, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts, close quotes. We humbled ourselves and began preparing earnestly for the challenging assignment ahead of our family. We spent nine months preparing for our mission in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Thankfully, our children were admitted to schools in South Carolina and started making friends online with their new community. They also engaged in online youth and primary activities with members in South Carolina and felt belonging. We were thrilled and knew we were off to a great start. We also had several meetings with the previous mission leaders, the Inesses, and felt their love as well as the love and anticipation of the missionaries in the South Carolina Columbia Mission. When it was time to leave Ghana and travel to our assigned area, 
we encountered an unexpected obstacle. The borders closed due to the pandemic and prevented airline travel. We were confused and disappointed. Days and weeks passed and it became clear that we might not be able to travel as planned. Eventually, our predecessors, the Inesses, were released and interim local mission leaders were called to hold down the fort until we could travel. After a few more days, we received a call from the missionary department informing us, that, informing us of a change in our assignment due to travel difficulties. Originally, mission leaders from Utah were called to serve in Ghana. The Monsons from Sandy, who were initially assigned to the Ghana Accra mission, would now be going to the South Carolina Columbia mission. The Youngs from Centerville, who arrived in Ghana just after the borders were opened in September 2020 and were originally assigned to the Ghana Cape Coast mission, would go to the Ghana Accra mission. The Morrisons would take the Ghana Cape Coast mission. The particularly mind-blowing news was that the change was to be effective the next day. Do you recall our initial conversation with President Oaks? It was being fulfilled. Our mission assignment was being communicated, but not in an expected way we were going to serve in Africa. My friends, that was the only time you would have seen mission leaders murmur, but we have since repented. We had all prepared for nine or more months for origi our, our original assignments. We have shipped all our personal belongings to South Carolina. Those belongings had arrived and were arranged in a mission home thousands of kilometers away where we would never live. Fun fact, the Ghana Cape Coast mission boundaries encompass places where Hannah and I were born, grew up, joined a church, and attended seminary, high school, and college. The area is also where we left for our young missions, came back, and got married. Our parents, other family members, and close friends lived there. We felt uncertain about working in such a familiar environment. Reluctantly, yet with a sense of acceptance, we went shopping for new items and mentally prepared our boys for the new challenges they would face. While traveling from Accra, to Cape Coast, which took about three hours, our sons came to understand the adjustments they would need to make, such as attending a new school, making new friends at school and church. When we arrived at the mission home, the outgoing mission leaders, the Hillams, warmly welcomed us and passed on the baton to us. That evening, as a family, we knelt in prayer and asked God why this change has happened to us and how he wanted us to proceed. I received a strong impression in my mind in the form of this verse. For I will go before your face. I will be on your right hand and on your left. And my spirit shall be in your heart and mind and mind angels round about you to bear you up. My dear brothers and sisters, from the very first meeting with the missionaries, some of whom are present here today, we knew why the Lord has sent us to Cape Coast, Ghana. Though we were initially disappointed about not going to South Carolina, we wouldn't trade our experiences in the Ghana Cape Coast mission for anything. It turned out to be the best and the most rewarding thing that ever happened to us. I intentionally 
and genuinely share this personal story to ensure that the principles we are discussing today resonate and feel relevant. There are several important principles and teachings that can be gleaned from this experience. I will discuss just four. One, trust in the Lord's timing. President Darlene H. Oaks thought, quote, a great scripture in the doctrine and covenants declares that a particular spiritual experience will come to us in his own time, in his own way, and according to his own will. This principle applies to revelation and to all of the most important events in our lives. Birth, marriage, death, even our moves from place to place, close quotes. Consider this true story from Ghana. John Mensah had traveled from his village to attend a session at the Accra Temple. And having arrived later than planned, he missed the session and went in to do initiatory ordinances instead. He was about 50 years of age, and a man of about 75 years sat down beside him. He introduced himself as John Mensah, and the older man said that he was John Mensah also. The older man asked where he was from, and when the village was named, the older man said, that is my village also, my friends. Father was meeting son for the first time since his birth, when the matriarch of the village cast him out and there was no way to return without injury. They had both received the restored gospel in different parts of Ghana and were privileged to meet in the house of the Lord. Even when things may not happen according to our own plans, we can have faith that God's timing is perfect. Principle two, submit to the Lord's will. When we engage in good causes and align our will with God's, we submit both our desires and our flesh meaning our bodies and actions to him. Such submission helps us to progress on the covenant path, grow in our discipleship. The Savior set a perfect example for this submission through his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. In Matthew's account, Jesus prays three separate times, each ending with the same sentiment, quote, not as I will, but as thou wilt, close quotes. By submitting to and relying on God, we gain strength and are equipped for the assignments ahead. For this reason, it is crucial to maintain open and in regular communication with our Heavenly Father as we navigate the intricacies of life. Consider the significance of Peter leaving his net straight away. If he had not done so, he might have achieved greater success among the local fishermen. But he could have missed the incredible experience of being on the Mount of Transfiguration and hearing the voice of God. True joy and fulfillment come when we align our will with the will of Heavenly Father. Let us humbly submit to his guidance, trusting that he knows what is best for us. As we surrender to his will, our own will is swallowed in his, and we offer our hearts, minds, and souls as offering to him. We can humbly pray in our own circumstances and difficulties. Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, 
not my will, but thine be done. Principle three, make the best of challenging circumstances. Missionaries from North America often face cultural shock upon arriving in Ghana. They may feel uncertain, confused, or anxious due to the unfamiliar food, hot weather conditions, and language barriers. However, miracles happen as they focus on the savior and embrace the experience. And their attitude shifts from wanting to go home to giving it one more transfer to finding joy and even desiring to extend their missions if possible. In, difficult, in the midst of difficult circumstances, remember that we can find strength and growth through the Savior. Challenges often provides us with opportunities for personal development, increased empathy towards others. The Apostle Paul thought, quote, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose, close quote. Let us embrace the idea that we are not bound to remain as we are right now. Change is often seen as a threat, causing many of us to be wary and resisted without even considering its potential benefits. However, when we expect and plan for change, it can lead to incredibly fulfilling and transformative experiences in life. While change can be painful, recognizing the progress it brings can be immensely satisfying. Rather than viewing change as an adversary, we should approach it thoughtfully, be open to the rewarding and profound experiences it can offer. Brothers and sisters, in the valleys of life, where we step out of our comfort zones, growth tends to happen. Repentance, which involves accepting and learning from our mistakes, causes change. Unfortunately, some individuals are unwilling to change, thereby hindering their ability to truly repent. It is important to recall the words of Paul when he faced numerous challenges and afflictions. Quote, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. President Russell, Russell M. Nelson's inspiring talk from last general conference serves as a great motivator in this earthly experience. He taught us to make the best of our challenging circumstances when he said, quote, when you are confronted with a dilemma, think celestial. When tested by temptation, think celestial. When life or loved ones let you down, think celestial. When someone dies prematurely, think celestial. When someone lingers with a devastating illness, think celestial. When the pressures of life crowd in upon you, think celestial, close quotes. Blessings and growth have come to the three missions I mentioned previously. This summer, the South Carolina Columbia Mission was split to create the South Carolina Charleston Mission. The Ghana Accra Mission was split to create the Ghana Accra North Mission. The Ghana Cape Coast Mission was split to create the Ghana Takoradi Mission. In addition, a temple has been announced for Ghana Cape Coast. What a blessing. Hannah and I consider these noble children of God, our missionaries, as literally our family too. We laugh with them, cry with them, celebrate their success together, attend their marriages where convenient, and meet together regularly. They are our reward for whatever efforts we put forth. When we 
choose to follow and align our world with Heavenly Father's will and his prophets, we gain spiritual guidance and direction in our lives. This can lead to personal growth, character development, and an increase in spiritual strength. We have seen the growth that has come to our family as our teenage, teenage boys chose to follow us to serve in the pandemic. Our family has received strength and experienced greater joy, love, and peace within our home. Principle four, embrace unexpected opportunities. Change is inevitable aspect of life. Whether they involve a new home, school, job, or relationship, these opportunities will show up at various points in your life. Some may be anticipated, whilst others might catch you off guard. The question is not whether new opportunities would arrive, but rather when they will come your way. Life presents us with unexpected opportunities that carry the potential for growth. Let us adopt um, open-minded and willing attitude, embracing these pleasant surprises, knowing that they may lead us towards extraordinary paths that could never, or that we could never have imagined. My dear friends, with these unexpected, when these unexpected opportunities arise, will you face them with fear or with faith? Faith is an attribute of Christ. It is a valuable gift bestowed upon us by God. However, possessing and exercising faith is a choice that requires effort. By acting on our own faith, we make righteous decisions and enhance our spiritual capacity and strength. Therefore, it is not enough to simply possess faith as belief. We must take action, for faith without works is dead. With God's assistance, you are capable of navigating any unforeseen opportunities that cross your path. Embracing new opportunities with faith means allowing hope to guide you. Hope serves as a source of motivation, builds trust in God and his promises, enables you to perceive things in a positive light, and helps you to recognize your own positive attributes. In closing, brothers and sisters, I have discovered that Focusing on Jesus Christ allows us to see the bigger picture. We may not always understand why certain changes happen or are happening in our lives, but with Christ as our center, we can have faith that every change and every blessing serve a purpose in our divine progression. I testify that in my own journey, I have seen undeniable blessings that have come from embracing change and fixing my focus on the Savior. I have witnessed personal growth, increased faith, and strengthened relationships, and an enhanced ability to recognize and follow the promptings of the Spirit. These blessings have brought greater meaning and purpose to my life and I testify that they are available to all those who seek them. I testify of the Savior whose work this is, and of the assurance that he is nearer us than we can possibly comprehend. I invite each, of, each one of you to take a moment to reflect on the changes that have occurred in your own lives and consider how focusing on Jesus Christ has influenced your experiences. As we embrace change with faith, trust in the Lord's plan, and anchor our lives to his teachings, we can find enduring peace, 
abundant blessings and the strength to face whatever lies ahead. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.